Okay, so now we have our basic MIDI clip. I'm searching for something that's not too harsh and with not so much mids. So you have a nice click in the top end and your, your bottom end is also very tight. Okay, so now we are just going to build up our basic groove. pretty cool that you can play your sample with the arrow keys so you can just make up a little groove even though you don't already loaded it into your sampler. Always save your projects. <laughs> Alright, so now we're just building up the very basics of our loop and off hi hat. So we're producing melodic house, so we are searching for something that's not too techno-ish, so more like smaller bit hi-hat sounds. So this one is really tight and it's not taking too much space. Alright, so now we can start by building the background harmony. I like to use like very unconcrete sounds for stuff like that. So in this case, I chose the scale of C minor for this production. So now we're searching for some background loops, which we can then loop and stack and just build up an interesting background um, atmosphere. So something like this very paddish style works pretty well for this um, use case. And then you just loop it wherever you want. You can even take one of those pads and loop it in different sections and stack them together and pan them and all that stuff. All right, so now that we have our basic harmony, we can start building up our bass line and it makes sense because we have a tonal reference to it. Just searching for some bass sounds there. Let's just record those three notes. It's basically a um, F minor chord played from the top down. So it's first is the C, then it's the F, and then it's the A flat. So now we have the fun foundation for like a three chord song. the volume slightly and I want to get rid of those upper frequencies because um, we don't need them in the beginning so let's just duplicate the loop to get like a little bit of a longer starting point there Okay, so now you can just duplicate the MIDI channel at another Diva instance or any synth you like and um, stack those and make up harmonies. I think it's cool if you just scroll through some presets sometimes as well as of course 
doing the patches all by yourself. Um, I think you can, it's just a matter of taste in the end and you can come up with really different uh, res results. Okay, so now I'm building up fifth on the chords. You can even enable the scale on the on the left drop-down menu where there's scale and then you can if you have any struggles with that. So now I'm adding the third but one octave higher. So not in root position, but I'm transposing the third up an octave and this makes the sound more open, more crystal clear somehow. Okay, so now I'm trying to alternate uh, the notes in the chords of the second pad, so we have a little bit more harmonic variation. And you can do this by ear. I mean, you can look up all the chords in, in the internet or something, but you will you will feel what's right. Okay, so if something is very wrong, you will hear the vibration to get really intense, like and then you have to change it. Okay, so now it's time for like a main lead or more of a sequence kind of a sound. Just playing and jamming around a little bit on the, on the MIDI keyboard. So let's hit recording. trying to go with the chords there. So C minor, F minor and um, A flat major. Consolidate, quantize and did you, you have to really shorten up the sound otherwise um, it will sound a little bit weird especially with sequence sound. And we want to have it very moody in the beginning, so nothing too open, like cut off wise there. And now you can just start by adding different variations to your melody and just see what fits. And you really want to stay in that flow, you know? And if you get kicked out, that's like at this time, for example, you want to change the note. So this is what I'm like feeling-wise looking for. And now I'm just trying around if like later on in the arrangement this sound will work if we open it up. Like that, there's something that's changing way too fast. Yeah, this one is making just problems. <laughs> Trying to get a little fill in the in the end of our sequence.
I'm just searching for something that complements the groove. So this is like just basic scrolling through samples and then you will, you, you will have that point where it fits. So this is giving something to the whole groove that is making very interesting because it's a very stable sound that's not changing. So all the harmony is changing but the sound staying the same. Just level it a little bit down. So now there's like in the, in the groove section we, we, we can do more. So nothing too full. I mean, this really depends on in which direction you want to push your track. If you want to make it more Afro-ish, maybe you want to look for Conga Bongo. If you want to make it, I don't know, more melodic techno, you want to look for some more um, very harsh elements. But I want to make it really dreamy and moody. So this one was perfect, just quantize it a little bit. You can reduce like the, the length of the, of the different sounds in your loop by reducing that um, small arrow, like from 100 to about, around like 20. loops so you can instantly drag them down a little bit there or at least in my, in my production I don't want them to be super upfront so now we lead like our main clap we've got this like dance hall rhythm that we program in the beginning but now I just want to clap like on our regular two and four clap position. You hear like those real claps, they sound super organic. They don't pop out of the mix that much. And this is really taste, you know, it's nothing wrong or right. But if you want to have a cut construct that is very like glued together, you want to search for sounds that are similar and all kind of organic, you know. But if you want to provoke like a sound coming really out of your um, out of your mix, you just pick a sample that's very different from all the others. Phil does not make any sense. Okay, so now the loop is nice and tight. Just playing around with the cutoff to check if the sound is opening up nicely. Because later on, if you're turning the knob, you want it to behave the way you want and you don't want to have any bad um, experiences. <laughs> So the MIDI notes are, are too low, so I'm just going to delete them. And you know, if you're like doing this kind of ARP stuff, if it's changing to a different chord, you want to make sure that you have the same amount of notes in that chord. Otherwise it will sound a little bit weird because then it's arpeggiating three notes and the other time only two or maybe four. And this will change the, ry the rhythm of the whole arpeggio.
so the sound wasn't the right one or the preset. But it's something I, I, I try to like go with a preset, do something and change it there and go to the next preset and change it there. And this is how you can develop your track um, further. So just adding a little bit of effects to make it more dreamy. And now I'm just trying to put them all together, one after the other, to check if there's anything that's like, oh, okay, no, this has to change or anything wrong, uh, like note-wise, pitch-wise, and of course, all the other parameters um, as well. There were too, for example, too many high frequencies in the bass left. trying to imagine how the sound will sound like that I'm or how the note will sound like if it's higher or lower and then I try to get as accurate as possible. So a fifth higher, an octave higher, only a whole step higher. So now I'm just trying to um, double it. I'm always trying to push my songs in different directions while I'm doing the track and then maybe come back later just to see which idea is working out in the best way, you know, to, to really make the, the track the strongest it can be. So for example we could use like just the first um, chord of those C of the C minor um, cadence there. And it's already super dreamy. So now we wanna add a little bit of reverb to the strings so they don't disappear too suddenly. Now they're blending nicely with the mix. Maybe layer the clap a little bit. And with layering you can go on and on and on and on and on. There's no stopping point. <laughs> Maybe you also want to just layer like one clap with a certain sound and, and the second one um, after it with, with another one so you can create variation. Um, just within your claps. And this makes it sound very organic. Okay, so just some basic grouping, renaming, just like mute all the loops and then bring them all to back in together and there's nothing that's 
distractive or bad and something that doesn't sound good, that's a good thing if that happens. Okay, so now we can go on like in a basic arrangement. So just duplicating all the loops there. And this is how I actually start my arrangements. And then you just cut away all that stuff that you don't need. In the beginning we just really want to start simple. We don't need the art, we don't need the kick to go, to go off right away. Also the, the main art was too open in the beginning. What you're looking for is the feeling of, okay, now I need a sound, or the feeling of, okay, there's too much coming in at that moment. That's what, that's what you have to arrange after, okay? And my process of producing, it's, it's not very linear, so I'm not like doing like a sound design and then the arrangement and then the mixing and then the mastering. I'm more of a guy doing it all at the same time somehow because okay, now there's this idea for a sound and then why shouldn't I do it? Adding sidechain to the pads. You can use every compressor, doesn't, really doesn't matter. Also like things like shaper box work pretty well as sidechain. See, we don't need the ARP in the beginning. It's making too much movement. Maybe we can even filter it in. And you really want to chill out in the beginning of your production, okay? Because if you're giving away everything you have in the beginning, there will be nothing left that will be surprising and therefore nice to hear for the listener. Okay, so, I mean, breaks, you can, you can make a, a break just by deleting the kick. This is a break, basically. How much, how, how thin you want to make it, that's completely up to you. I would recommend you just uh, cut off some of the drums in the end of your break and then you come back into the drop with all the element, elements and it will make a great impact. Also, in the end of the break, if you automate like the arpeggio here to open up, it will sound pretty cool. Now it's too open in the drop, so I would close it again. can add like an like an head layer on, on the drop to give it a little bit more drive because now our head that we chose it's very thin very very good for the beginning part but later on we have something that's a little bit more drivey longer longer hi-hats make up a, a more driving groove Adjusting the level a little bit, panning it slightly. If you pan every instrument a little bit to the left, to the right, you get a really nice stereo field, just a little bit. So we can even start a little bit thinner in the beginning. So if we cut away all the lows and a little bit of the highs of the pads, um, we will achieve that. And then you can open it up over the course of the track. So now we don't want to start like with the harmony right in the beginning. I just want to start with one note and then open up the harmony in the, in the course of the track as well. So that's why I'm just looping the first note of the bass line there. We don't need any strings at the beginning.
reactivate the automation and then we like open up the pad to get it to its fullest um, tum tumbra in, in the break. So just duplicating the whole thing the right there. We have our first break, then that will be our drop, and now we need to, to build like a second break. And the drop can be a little bit longer. baseline there and now it's working but in the beginning when it stood for itself alone there were too many highs in it but in the in the context of the whole arrangement and the whole elements it's working out pretty well a little bit of CPU crackling adding some basic cutoff automation on the on the main lead and you can do so much automation really guys and girls there's no not not anything that's too much right there i've seen people that they do so much automation you, you will not believe me okay so now we are heading into the next break Pretty cool, like with this one note bass line, it's just like a standing there, standing there, and you're waiting for the harmony to open up again. And I think I don't have enough time to finish the arrangements, not even the mixing and all the other stuff. And again with the hi hat. Six seconds left and you know with those layers you could even like I mean I deleted them but you could bring them in later or something and start to do um, melodic variations with them a second voice for example over your um, melody which makes it a little bit more interesting adjusting all the automations here but yeah that's when the time stopped Of course I would have done so much more to this track, but within 30 minutes it's super hard to do everything. Um, but I think you can get a, a good like, general overview of how I would approach um, all the different smaller aspects of the production. So picking your sound, um, your arrangement, your synth sounds, flipping instruments, flipping samples, basic leveling, um, basic FX and all that stuff. Um, so you can you can get a, a basic idea pretty fast, but working that idea out and do all the small variations and cutting out a kick here and there and adding a little bit of claps and fills, that can take hours and hours and hours. So I think also there the 2080 rule applies. So in 80% of the time, um, you're just doing 20% of, of impact to your track and 20% of the time you're doing 80% impact of your track. So without further going, I want to say thank you for watching and see you next time here on PML.